Welcome to the Somatic Coaching Academy podcast with Ani and Brian. Join us as we explore the art and science of trauma-sensitive somatic practices and tools to strengthen your practice as a coach, therapist, or holistic professional. Master the art of motivating even the most challenging clients when you'll understand how to tap into and unlock your client's complete holistic intelligence. If you want to learn the most cutting edge, research supported skills for personal and professional mastery, you've come to the right place. Let's get this conversation started. Hi there, and welcome to the Somatic Coaching Academy podcast. Hey, Brian. Hey, Ani. We're excited to bring you episode 10. Today, we're talking about the growing need of trauma-informed life coaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, not a lot of life coaches are trauma-informed at this point. It's kind of like this growing need, and I'm really glad about that. I mean, not just because of the uh, trauma prevalence, because we're going to talk about that, Mm -hmm. but just because to me, it just feels like the right thing to do. Sure. Yeah. There's a whole idea of um, do no harm, right? I think when people become coaches, life coaches, they want to do that because they want to help people. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, people who've experienced uh, past trauma, which we're going to talk about because they're more of us than you think, (laughs) have experienced that. Um, Even through a simple coaching process can be harmful to someone, actually can be re-traumatizing to people. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about trauma prevalence because we say that we do trauma sensitive coaching skills and some people go, hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't work with people who have trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know what? We don't, none of us have the luxury to say that. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, there's pre-COVID numbers, pre-COVID research. And so just think about what happened during COVID, (laughs) by the way. Yeah. But so these numbers are pre-COVID that 90% of people have experienced at least one event in their life that is, has been considered to be traumatically stressful. In other words, they've had a physiological response in their body, a physiological stress response that is directly associated with some sort of life threat. And so, and by the way, that can be a physical life threat. It can be an emotional life threat. It can be a psychological life threat. It could be a threat to gender. It can be kind of, uh, but some type of direct or, or racial life associated threat, right? I mean, which kind of weaves together with physical, emotional, psychological. But anyway, what we're saying is your body doesn't distinguish between what type of threat it is, whether it's physical, emotional, psychological or otherwise. Well, practitioners do though sometimes, or they try, right? Sure. To, to look at somebody and be like, oh no, that trauma is too big. Or, you know, I don't know about this trauma. But the thing is, we're talking about 90% of people. Mm-hmm. And the way in which the trauma kind of comes out doesn't often come out as a big traumatic memory. Like you might have, you know, sit down yeah. in therapy and talk about your past. Like that's not how it comes out. It reminds me of, of if you take a balloon, Brian, you just kind of like pull apart the the mouth part, right? Yeah, yeah. It just goes, eee! yeah. It just kind of ekes out. It ekes out in things like procrastination, mm-hmm. lack of motivation, negative thought patterns, rumination, stress, anxiety, mm-hmm. all kinds of things that yeah. are regular stuff. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. If you go out and just look on the internet, right? There's a lot of debate going on right now about what is trauma and what's not trauma. Is trauma being used, that word trauma being used too much? Do people talk about trauma? Oh, someone yelled at me and they're calling that trauma versus someone who has some other type of, got in a car accident, is that trauma? Um, So let's just kind of talk about how we talk about trauma for a moment because it's really important to us that we step away actually from a lot of this judgment around trauma, around, oh, yours wasn't a trauma, mine was a trauma, or mine wasn't a trauma, yours was a trauma. Let's just step away from it for a second and look at it like this. What would the nervous system say about it? Not what would a human person say about it based on all of our past experience or what we've been learned or taught or anything like that. What would the nervous system say about it? From a nervous system perspective, if something happened at an earlier time in your life, as early as yesterday, okay, or 20, 50 years ago, that is 
still affecting your physiology today in the present in the present moment. moment that makes it difficult for you to live your life freely that's trauma and let's just face it it's just not helpful is it to be like you know oh that's not big enough or that you know no, it's just not helpful not helpful it's not helpful and you you made a really important point present moment mm -hmm. We like to say our subconscious mind doesn't know what time it is. The subconscious mind doesn't know how old we are. And so things happen and they get stored in the subconscious, but they are relevant in the present moment and we can work with them in the present moment. So we're not talking about doing therapy with people. We're talking about doing coaching. We're talking about doing present moment inquiry, being with somebody, um, and unraveling things within the context of how it feels in the present. Exactly. You know, and again, let's just go this idea of trauma-informed life coaching. And we're saying right now, you know, I, we don't think that it's important or that it should happen that life coaches should be doing trauma-specific work with people unless you've been trained in trauma-specific work. So what's trauma-specific work? Well, this is something that typically a trauma therapist would do with someone where they're actually working with a person on the specific trauma content with which was the initiating trauma for that person, which changed their nervous system in the past as early as yesterday or last week or last month or last year or decades ago, the trauma content. So when we talk about doing trauma sensitive work, we're actually working with the person's nervous system, not with the trauma content itself. We're working with helping someone to regulate a dysregulated nervous system because the dysregulated nervous system is what is happening in the present moment as a result of something happening in the past. So we have a fantastic article in our library about the four types of trauma-informed uh, practice. Trauma practices. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, levels of trauma. Practice. Levels of tra trauma practice. And that's a great article mm -hmm. to look at. It's in our library. Um, I also want to talk about, Brian, that we're talking about this 90%. Let's just bring up that other 10% here for just a mm -hmm. second, because that the 10% of people who haven't had a direct trauma in their life, I am willing to bet were raised by somebody who mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. And when you're raised by somebody who, who has had trauma in their life, you're actually taught things um, you know, uh, how to think, how to act, how to, how to feel, uh, about situations mm -hmm. and you inherit that you learn that. And that's how you act and behave. It's how you feel and think. And you don't even know that that's based on trauma reactions. Sure. Yeah. And so yep. again, we're talking about unlearning things that were taught by our parents or our lineage. And even with that stuff, it's this present moment experience that we're having with somebody in coaching to be able to help them to unravel. Yeah. What's going on? It's, yeah, I'm glad you keep, you bring this up. You bring this point up um, so frequently, Ani, and it's so important. I'm so glad that you keep bringing this point up because it's, we don't know the water that we're swimming in oftentimes. And when we inherit and there's research to show that actually trauma, trauma, responses in the nervous system can be inherited. So when they talk about inheriting trauma, actually what you're inheriting are the nervous system responses that are associated with certain activating events in your current life. So it's really it's really fascinating how that how that works. And someone can be born with an inherited tendency to have a reactivation of their own nervous system in certain situations in the world and just think that that's how they are because that's yeah. how they were born. That's the water they're swimming in. And oftentimes people really think they're broken. Yeah. Right? Think They think there's something wrong with me. Like for both the 10% and the 90%, right? Absolutely. There's so many people. And, you know, I think I've, I've thought that about myself totally. sometimes. Me I'm too. sure you've thought about your, that about yourself. Almost everybody we've ever, ever, I think everybody we've ever come in contact with who's doing this work at some type at some time in their life, had thought I'm broken. Yeah, there's really some. There's something fundamentally wrong with me. Yeah, and that's something that trauma does. Yeah, you know, because of the without going into all the details of what trauma would look like or could look like or has looked like, um, when trauma when trauma is initiated at some point in time, especially if it's initiated in relationship with somebody else, that can 
basically feed our self-esteem and capacity that we are broken. It will affect our self-worth. It'll affect our capacity to create safety for ourselves. And this is what life coaches are working with and dealing with. As a life coach, you know this. You're actually helping so someone might want to have a uh, um, – what's a basic goal in life coaching? Let's say to – have better relationships. Have better relationships, right? I want to get along better with my husband or with my wife. And then in the in the act of doing that, you actually run into a block. Somebody ends up with a block with someone that they just can't trust their spouse, that they don't trust people or something. And oftentimes, like that marker alone right there is associated with a past experience that is currently affecting someone's nervous system such that when they try to trust the person, it affects their nervous system. They get dysregulated, they get upset, not just emotional, but they get spun out. It's very difficult to bring them back. I mean, all those things, that's that's a sign and that's signs and symptoms that trauma is at play. And let's just bring up too, that it's important to remember when we talk about the fact that 90%, <clears throat> 100% of your clients are dealing with some kind of trauma history. Mm. We're talking also about 100% of life coaches. Mm, yes, yeah. So mm -hmm. the, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. The growing need for trauma-informed life coaching means that life coaching, life coaches are doing their work to look at this stuff because it's really insidious how we as coaches can get kind of hooked in and buy in and not kind of understand what's going on with our clients when we're actually swimming in that water ourselves and we don't know it. But here's an interesting thing I see a, a lot of times with life coaches. Um, man, you, you go to life coach school and you get your certification. It's like the best ever. You feel better than you've ever felt. You're thinking yeah. differently. It's so awesome. And then you go to get clients and it's hard to get clients or you're not making the sales you want to or you want to leave your job and you haven't yet or you, you're not able to really create the income that you want to create and you think to yourself what's wrong with me hmm. what's wrong with me that i can't do this and other people can do it and that right there is what you were talking about yeah. right and so our business development and the ways that we interact with our business as life coaches can actually reflect some of these things which is awesome because then we can do our own work to become a really clean, clear channel. It reminds mm. me of like, um, we live by Lake Champlain. So it reminds me of when I look at the lake, Brian, I can see the trees reflected mm, yeah. in the water. So that that's how we can be with our clients where they're like the trees being reflected in the water. We can be a very clean and clear reflection for our clients when we're doing this work for yeah. ourselves. Yeah, and, and also, uh, being that clean and clear reflection and still being emotionally available, mm -hmm. right? So not like hard and like, like I'm a clean, clear reflection and I'm not doing you know, We lose that social engagement aspect of yeah. what's so important in terms of coaching relationships. So I wouldn't hire that coach, by the way. Right. I mean, <laughs> right, I agree with you. And at the same time, I mean, you could probably admit, like if we have a hard time with our own stuff, we get armored up. Yeah. We can get really armored up with our clients and we actually lose that capacity to be connected to another human being, which is so valuable. Just helping someone, we're not going to say for healing, we're just going to say it helps someone else reach a goal, reach a goal. Absolutely. Right? There has to be some level of connection that you're not talking with a robot um, or some AI creation around helping to facilitate moving forward in a human experience. Um, so... This let's just kind of round it back for a second on this growing need for trauma-informed life coaching. Let's just circle back. So why is there such a growing need for trauma-informed life coaching? I think if I just start putting some bullet points in this, it's because you might, like Ani pointed out, not think that you work with people with trauma, but the thing is you already are. You are. There, you already are. You work with clients. You're working with you work with, with you work with humans. You're working with humans' nervous systems, and most likely, they're more than most likely, definitely, their nervous systems have been somehow sculpted and created by some past experience to them that felt like it was a threat to their life in some way, and that could be even an identity threat. 
right? Identity threat is also technically a life threat, the way it processes itself in the nervous system. So you're already working with people with trauma. So let's just get over that hurdle. Mm -hmm. Let's just say, because if you don't want to work with people with trauma, like go into the woods by yourself <laughs> and, um, and I don't know, work, cut with, down, work, with, numbers. work with numbers or something <laughs> like that, right? I mean, so any, anybody working with humans is working with people with trauma traumatized nervous systems, let's say, traumatized nervous systems. So let's get over that hurdle. So the next thing is, how do we make it not scary to work with people with traumatized nervous systems? And I think that's a lot of what we like to do here at the Somatic Coaching Academy, right? We like to, let's kind of just make it not a scary thing. I'd maybe say normalize it. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be scary at all, actually. It can be really unbelievably rewarding and wonderful. Um, and as coaches different than therapists, we're not going into the nitty gritties of the traumatic mm -hmm. experience and the memories and dragging all of that stuff out. We are still helping people to reach their highest potential and, and, and their goals that they truly want to achieve. That's really what we're doing. And we know how to work masterfully with the nervous system. Yeah. I think that word actually is is what I really want to leave people with is masterful because with anything that we go and learn, it's not just one and done with the learning process to right. develop mastery. So I hope for anyone and everyone that they want to develop mastery with their craft. If you've gone to life coaching school and you really want to develop mastery, and I hope you do, somatic coaching skills are a fantastic way to develop mastery mm with your craft. And of course, the better we get at our craft, the more um, awesome work we're going to do, which means the better case studies, the better testimonials and referrals and all of that stuff. Um, and you're going to just discover so much about yourself too, as you master your craft of life coaching by including these uh, trauma-informed, trauma-sensitive skills. Yeah. I mean, and so just to kind of punctuate that point, Ani, is and it's so hard to kind of follow that because that was just like a wonderful explanation of the importance of all these things is is that as a trauma informed life coach having these skills if you can masterfully affect your client's nervous system they will reach every goal that they want they will and yeah. that's the thing i mean that actually the key to unlocking reaching any goal that your client wants is being able to help them balance, um, uh, stabilize, and then basically express the beauty of their nervous system out yeah. there in the world. Yeah. If you're interested in moving forward with this and becoming a trauma-informed life coach, your first step actually is to be a trauma-aware life coach. And you can do that on our website. You go to our website and uh, go to Unlocking Human Potential. Mm -hmm. And after that course, you are going to have the information to be a trauma or coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is your first step. First step. So uh, get on that path. It's a worthy one. And we feel like it just, uh, it really helps us to feel such deep, meaningful purpose and impact in our lives. And we know it's going to do the same for you too. Yeah. Thanks for having this conversation with us about the growing need for trauma-informed life coaching. And we look forward to seeing you on our next podcast. Thank you for listening to this episode. We hope that this conversation will help you improve your practice and change the way you think about your work, your clients, and yourself. Continue your exploration of trauma-sensitive somatic coaching by listening to more podcast episodes at somaticcoachingacademy.com. You could be the trusted guide that people turn to to help them with their most challenging situations and to reach their most precious goals. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.